Composure is the message. Got to get the message. The message to our brothers and sisters. I'm Dr. Gloria Lattimore, Peace host and producer of the H3O Show. And here we are again, out on a date. This time we're in the near loop at Nicole's gallery. Nicole is opening today's exhibit with two artists. And we're here to interview those artists, to look at their work, and to look at the work of Alan Stringfellow, who is always a staple at Nicole's gallery. Come and join us. And tapes rolling back. And in five, four, three. I'm here with two Nicoles, actually. I'm here with Nicole Smith, who is the gallery owner of Nicole's Gallery, and with Nicole Kaplan who is the artist, one of the artists, who is exhibiting her work here tonight. Her show is opening here, and Nicole is going to interpret for her because she has not got a lot of English. Nicole, introduce our artist and tell us something about how you came to know her and her work. Okay, uh, good evening. This is Nicole Kaplan. Uh, a year ago, a friend of mine talk to the audience and, and a year ago a friend of mine introduced uh, Nicole to me to me through her photograph because that friend went to, to France as an artist to exhibit her work and so she as an exchange she introduced Nicole in turn to exhibit here that's how I met Nicole and this is the first time she has come to the United States of America and what kind of work does she do? Oh, they are uh, uh, portraits. Uh, she uses uh, different media. And uh, they are mainly portraits of people. She uh, uses acrylic she and uses, ink. She uses acrylic, she uses oil, she uses ink. And she uses a lot of, a lot of media. A lot of media. I yes. noticed that her signature looks like a flower. Okay. 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 I see. Shall we look at some of her work? Oh, certainly. All right. Where okay. shall we start? We could start uh, over at here, the, right here. So let's example. turn around and talk uh -huh. about this yes. piece. Okay. Dis-nous, dis-moi d'abord ce que signifie cette pièce. Alors, ceci, c'est une pièce au pastel euh, qui est travaillée. Je crois que c'est un hymne à la joie et à la femme. Okay. It's a uh, song for the woman and uh, for the man. Okay, she, it's a song for a woman, that's what she said, and then it's a pastel, so mm -hmm. it's a, you know, a beautiful uh, colored lady. Nicole says that she paints all colors because uh, to her she wants to talk about the beauty of the passion of the love of women. All right. So, yes. So she paints all, all women. All women. All right. Yes. Uh -huh. I think we're going to have to uh, pause right here so that we can let some people come in and then so that we can move down the gallery a little. Okay. So we can look at other work. Okay. All right. <laughs> 
Welcome, welcome. Well, I'm going to like let you walk the Love gallery. It. The oh, oh, my God, you came from a large family. <laughs> Alors, je ne sais pas où est la feuillage. Pas... Ok. C'est un, un pastel. Uh -huh. Feuillage. Alors, son nom, c'est Octavie. Ok. Tu peux me dire. Octavie, oh, même oui. si tu me prends. Alors, c'est. C'est. Cette pièce est un pastel et pierre noire. Son nom est Octavie. Well, this piece is a pastel. The name is Octavie. Uh -huh. Is Octavie a lady that you know? Yes. Uh, okay. It's beautiful. Okay. So that and Esa, comment tu appelles cette? Alors, cette toile est une une œuvre à l'huile et qui s'appelle Suzy. Suzy. Est-ce que Suzy c'est quelqu'un? Quelqu'un que j'ai vu, oui. Ok. Oh, Suzy is a, a lady that uh, pose for her. So this is an oil. And Suzy is one of her friends, right? C'est ton ami? Oui. Ok. Ok. Alors, cette pièce, c'est un travail d'acrylique et de pastel uh -huh. qui s'appelle euh, Amélie. Amélie. Oh, Amélie, oui, c'est une très belle toile. It's a beautiful painting and it's a pastel. And the name of the lady is Amélie. Un travail d'imaginaire. Ah, it's, a, it's Un imaginary. Travail, yes. This one is imaginary, but most of the others are really portraits of people mm. that she knows. Okay, hold it. And, okay. All right. Say, tell me about this painting, Nicole, and I will tell the audience. Cette peinture est une peinture euh, d'imaginaire. Elle s'appelle Magali, et c'est un, un hommage que je rends à la femme noire. Okay, this painting, the title is Magali, but it's an imaginary painting. It's an imaginary a, a person because he doesn't know somebody like that, but. It's an homage to the black women. Et à leur courage. And their courage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nicole, please tell me about this painting. Alors, cette toile s'appelle Chippy et c'est une, une toile qui raconte l'histoire d'une petite jeune femme effrontée. Okay. This uh, painting is a uh, the title of it is Chippy, and Chippy, uh, the painting really describes somebody who is bold, somebody who is uh, really bold. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Peut-être que je retire ça. I'm here with Jewel Russell O'Neill, who is one of the artists who is being uh, featured here at Nicole Gallery at this opening. And she is here from Ohio. Yes, we nice. welcome you to our fair city, Jewel, and Thank we'd you. like for, to talk about your art. So if we can turn, and well, I don't think I need to turn because I can look at the monitor. But if you will turn and describe what you've done, we would appreciate it very much. Thank you. This piece is called The Family. The family is very important. It should be important to all people. This is how we all started. There was a family. And this is the holy family depicting the holidays. And it's done in what medium? And it's done in acrylic. It's acrylic and gold leaf. And I used a, a very sharp pen to make the little designs in it. And the doves represent uh, holiness for the family. All right, and can we look at another? Is that a portrait that you've done here? Oh, yes. All right. Are these people that you know, or these are your creations? My creations. Uh, give a helping hand 
this is um, a woman, it could be any woman, helping a child that really needs help. There's so many children that are displaced. Even though family is important, many times there are children that do not have a family or someone to take care of them and shelter them. So this lady was on the street and saw this child that was in distress and decided to help him. Again, there's a dove, which is a symbol of peace, of something holy, something special. Thank you. And now we'll go next to another. This one is Grandpa's Girl. Actually, I knew this man, and he was a very special man in Cincinnati. He died... Um, several months ago. He was a designer. He kind of made himself, he was a school teacher, a science teacher, though he was really good with fashions and designing clothes. And he never had children of his own. He married in his older age and the woman that he married had a daughter that had a little girl. And the little girl lost her mother in a tragic accident and it was in the newspaper also. And I decided to do this painting to say Grandpa's girl. He loved this little girl as if she was his. And I would see them at the store, at the park, at the malls, and I thought it was worth uh, making a painting of. So Grandpa's girl. And this is? And this is done in pastel. All right. I love working with pastel. I think that is my first calling in painting from using crayons as a child and as an adult using pastels. and. I just love working with them. How long have you been an artist? Since I was five. Since a you little were girl. five. Yes. And how long have you been exhibiting publicly? I've been exhibiting publicly maybe 20 years. 20 years, mm -hmm. a long time. Yes. And do you do anything other than art? Other oh, than art that's creative? No, I just mean that sometimes people do art as a sort of hobby or oh, no, art like, is, this is your art is my profession it's my calling this is when what I'm doing do. my art I am so happy and content other than my children and now we have uh, twin granddaughters I identical little girls and they are a work of art also all right so mm -hmm. you create art in more than one way oh yes all right oh, yes. the picture behind us that's it I'll let you know The picture here is another family, so you are correct. You, have, you emphasize the importance of family. A family of women, strong women, beautiful women. All females are beautiful. Some of us do not appreciate ourselves as being a work of art, a work of beauty. It doesn't matter the skin color from the blackest black to the whitest white and in between. And sometimes some women feel that they're not worthy, that they're not beautiful, but they are. Because it comes from the heart. And this too is a family. It's like Sunday morning, all dressed for church. In the South, you see the men and women going to church every Sunday. A lot of times the woman is bigger, the man is little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my grandmother used to tell uh, tells about women and having babies and they would prefer their sons to marry a woman with big hips and big breasts because they felt the woman could produce healthy children and if they got a little skinny lady she might have problems so it emphasizes that. <laughs> you took it all to heart yeah uh -huh. So now we see that the baby is crying. I see tears. Yes, I... hush little baby, don't you cry. Is what that a tiny the tiny baby? Yes. Oh right. Okay. And on um... And it's acrylic. Yeah, okay. Our next painting by Jewel Russell O'Neill is a woman. Yes. Pretty elegance. Right. She's ready to go to the party, to the ball. And we, too, can go to balls and from the past and still, again, be very beautiful, very elegant. She took time to make herself. She was already beautiful, but she took time to put on more decorations so that she would be the belle of the ball. Pretty and elegant. Very beautiful. You like uh, patterns a lot, I see. I love patterns and I love colors. Mm -hmm. Colors are so dear to my heart also. This is acrylic? This is acrylic on canvas, yes. Right. 
and I also love designing in between my work. I was wondering if you had ever seen this dress or if you created it I on created canvas. this dress specifically for the canvas. Beautiful dress. And once that I added the flowers, I decided mm -hmm. mm, she'd look good with the pearl necklace, so I added the necklace last. You want to look at the camera now, Jewel? All right. Okay. Can you can this? You, go ahead. This is a series that I did. I called it the trilogy series one, two, three, and this is about women. Again, women. This is done in pastel. A lot of designing. It took time to actually think and then put it onto the paper and the different colors of the women because we as a group of people come in all shades of colors again showing the beauty in whatever shade you are and dealing with many women deal with nature uh, also with uh, the fruit of life which is food and the fowl, all kinds of the fowl, the fish it's just women intermingling in their environment with all the different things that you face every day. It's very interesting. And this, and this is, is another one of the trilogy oh. series. are slipping. Are they? It's on the wall. You want to go over and look on the wall? Can I move under there? Well, you need to take something with you if you go. So wait, let him tell you what you need to carry. Because it's under I'm there. So. Oh, no, that's he, okay. She needs, no. Oh, she I'll was, forgot okay. a title, so I was going to let her go look at the wall. No, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll give it. But she remembers it now. Remembers it now? Yes. <laughs> so this is... Um, <laughs> It's going to be like that for until we get through it. Okay. Through, I, can, I can untangle it. Okay. I just thought maybe I could. And look the closer. Look closer to it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I'll let you know when to start. Now, this is the second in the trilogy. Yes, it is. And this one is also dealing with human nature. The female, the mother of nature, she's peeping into life. Again, there's the fish. The fish is a symbolic to me of something slippery, something that can get away, but yet strong, and it also feeds you mm -hmm. in life. And the man with his back turned as, again, not always, but sometimes, the situations in life. And the woman has to remain strong. And she's kind of walking away. But in the end, there's this big hand that comes forth to say, stop. And sometimes you have to think about things in life and reconnect. And then the man turns around again in life. And sometimes uh, the situation is better. So actually, there's a story associated with your paintings. You're yes. never just painting no, a I painting always have for the a, sake of painting. I always have a story to tell. The and story. it's also pastel. All right, and the story in this one. And this is number three of the trilogy. And this, as you can see, is obvious. It's called Love. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful thing to have. Mm. And they're just in this garden with flowers and again the animal. It's a strange looking creature but an animal. Mm -hmm. And there's that hand again mm -hmm. for certain things between two people that love. You can do so much but sometimes you have to stop and think about a lot of the situations before you can go forward. And it's also in pastel. Right and a lot, a lot of patterns. Just yes. the number of patterns, um, I feel complementary patterns. 
I feel that a lot of my work isn't finished unless I design and decorate as I go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see that. All right, we have one here. Is that you? And Women. This is from my travels to Morocco. I thought it was so exciting, so unbelievable. I had to pinch myself to believe the scenes. A lot of things were real. I have to partake in various things there with the cooking, uh, dressing as the women did, and just mingling, having a great time. And there's one man there also. This is acrylic. with some gold leaf in it. So it's just women enjoying themselves and having a great day. Did we look at the one near the doors? We no, not yet. Should I stand closer? Yes. Ah, this is one of my masterpieces. This is oil on canvas. It's bath time with grandma. When I was a little girl, and I can picture so many people in my age group, maybe a little younger and truly older, when you went to grandma's house, she had this tub that she would put you in to give you a bath. And she would scrub so hard, but when it was over, you were so clean. And it was the love coming from grandma. And also in the background is mother. And mother is looking on to grandma, give the daughter a bath. And mother is also learning how to do this as grandma does. And the girl is not crying, the child is content. Also the colors and this big piece of soap. I remember my grandmother using this big piece of brown soap. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was called o oxygen, but a big piece of smelly brown soap that could really clean you. So it's bath time with grandma. And again, you see the different colors and the different family members. Would you be surprised if I told you the soap was oxidol? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. So let, okay. now we can go up and yes. look at this. This one is called Proud of Self. Again, dealing with women, I am a woman. I paint many females. Sometimes I do males, but I prefer doing females. I see so much in all of us. And there was a young lady that was, of course, a darker, a darker complexion and did not think she was beautiful. And it's to show that all women are beautiful. It doesn't matter your skin color. If you take care of yourself, you have proud in your, pride in yourself. You're beautiful. And once she fixed herself up, she was so pretty. So all women should feel proud of themselves, regardless of your status in life, your skin color, whatever. So it's called proud of self. And she is. And she has her toucan, and it's blending in with her dress. Also the designs, again, that I used. And there's the little dove to give her a ray of hope. Well, Jewel Russell O'Neill, we need to turn and face the camera, and you need to invite the Chicago audience to come down to see your work on exhibit here at Nicole's Gallery. And how long will this exhibit, how long will you be exhibiting here? This exhibit should be up for one month, I believe. For one month from this date, which is September 7th. Mm -hmm. So for a full month, your work will be here, and people yes. in the audience can come down and see the work, and uh, certainly you will be happy to hear their responses. Very happy. I'm very happy to be here. I feel honored to have my work on exhibit here. I thank Nicole and all the people that work with her. Thank you. Ayoka. Won't be sure talking. He's just gonna get um gonna give us a signal. And in five, four, three. Hello, my name is Ayoka Peace. I'm here with the legendary world renowned artist Alan Stringfellow. He has so graciously allowed me to be the one to interview him. Though I'm a novice, I am bowled over by his work and I hope to present it in the best light and the most beautiful light. Uh, it deserves to be shown in. 
here we are standing in front of one of his works. This looks like a very recent work. Could you please tell us what we're seeing? This is like a shot from a gallery. Okay. And each of these individual pictures are individual collages okay. of different works that I have done. That's uh, Sunday school and children at play, mm -hmm. a choir in church. This is Ladies' Day on the end, okay. and down here is a scene in the church with the preacher preaching, and an angel, and a holy mother, mm -hmm. and then the one on the end is my signature piece, the Red Umbrella Baptismal. This work is amazing. How did you come up with the, the technique that you have of doing collage? I've seen collages, but I've never seen this particular style. You no, know, I'm very interested. First, I have to say I have to give thanks to God. Yes. Because without his help, without his guidance, I would never be able to do it anyway. Yes. But I get my subjects from things that I have gone through, mm -hmm. things that I knew when I was child and a young person, you know. Yes. I'm over the hill now, but I still... You're so vital. You're more vital than people I know my age. I still <laughs> get the thing, but like I said, it's just his, without his help blessing me, and I feel so blessed to be doing something that I love to do. Yes. That's the And be for successful at it. And I like for all my work to make people feel good, remember something, or to be happy about. Yes, this, this work has a, a highly, of course, obviously spiritual uh, bent to it. Uh, makes you want to go to church, makes you want to praise them. And if that's what your that's, aim was, that's what the aim is. you have succeeded tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to move on to a, another piece now. So I would stay here with this one for hours, because there's so much to see. And it's amazing that you did a gallery of a, it's, it's just amazing, you did an a, a gallery this of This is really a painting of one, two, three, four, five, it's eight, really okay. eight paintings. On, of one? Eight little small collages in one. So if one would want to purchase this particular piece, this is a highly yeah. valuable yeah. <laughs> piece of work, since it features yeah. some of your great work. next piece uh, in the gallery uh, in your series of collages that we have here today. Uh, it's an amazing piece. I believe I see, I see a beach and a family out enjoying a one, wonderful summer day. Uh, what else are we seeing and what is the period that this piece represents? This is uh, Coney Island okay. in New York. Oh. I wasn't raised in New York but we got to go to New York about once a year. And Coney Island was the place to go. Mm. It's beautiful. And just, just a lovely beach scene. And something that captures the essence of mm. Coney Island during that time period. It's beautiful because nowadays you would never see uh, children out in the long shorts and the t-shirts, you know, and they got the, they have the parasols. And things. No, they so don't, a piece. they're not as dressed up. No, they're not as it modest a, or dressed up. When we went to Cody Allen back then, this must have been in the, around the 40s or like that. We dressed up to go to Cody Allen. It was a, it was a dress up occasion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is beautiful. I love this piece. Uh, we're going to walk on to see.
Mr. Shingfellow, you have a very diverse audience. As we were standing here, as I was reviewing your works before we got a chance to really talk during this interview, I see that your audience is, is a variety of races, a variety of ages. You seem to transcend the racial boundary and the age boundary, all boundaries. And I think it's due to the nature of your work. It is highly spiritual, and spirituality is universal. It speaks to the soul of what's inside of all of us. Can you elaborate on where this amazing depth of spirituality comes from? Well, this, <clears throat> this is one of my signature pieces, too, because I was raised in the church uh -huh. and in nightclubs for j jazz pieces. But the church, see, this is Ladies' Day at church. Now, in my hometown, we had a Ladies' Day. Now they have Ladies' Week. But Ladies' Day, that was where they wore their finest hats. Okay. They might have saved this hat all year to wear for this day. Okay. And the one thing that always happened in our churches, black ladies, we weren't black then, we were Negro ladies, mm -hmm. <laughs> always dressed up to go to church, which most of them do now. Yes. It was an occasion. It carries they, on. And they really would wear their hats. If they didn't have but one hat mm -hmm. and nothing else but a gingham, they, they, all, wore they all had wore that hat. Where did you get the materials? How did you and I used, like you say, all sorts of materials. Mm. A lot of it, and some of it is from things that I've had made for myself. Okay. Because I'm quite flashy. Well, yeah, you're flamboyant. <laughs> <laughs> and wonderfully dressed. And so I use materials, materials from, from everywhere. Mm. Just whatever struck your whatever fancy. Whatever struck out of a magazine. I could be walking and see something on the street mm -hmm. that was interesting or something that that I would use, you would never know where it came from, from what I make out of it. None of them were people. Yes. None of these were hats. Yes. It's just what I, how I cut, them, cut them and made them out of the hats. Now you said that even your glue is imported. Well, my, you... I've used a glue that's made in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I, lately I found out that that company's not making it anymore. I do have quite a bit. <laughs> In, in stock. On, in <laughs> stock. But the thing that I have to be careful, if you find a glue that works just perfect, mm -hmm. these pictures are rather expensive. And, that's, and they're, they're delicate. And delicate, and they've, they've got to last yes. the years. I know they last over 20 years because yes. I have... Have some of your own in your own that. collection. These, I mean, you can't see the bumps, you can't see, they're so smooth. The, uh, it's amazing. This is some beautiful, very detailed, uh, highly creative work, and I see why you're the legend that you are. We're going to go on to the next piece. Just a second. You don't have to go back into the shop, but you got to give me another second. Okay. This is another wonderful work uh, that we're previewing today here at Nicole's Gallery. Uh, this is the opening of Shrink Fellow Show here at Nicole's Gallery. A very beautiful, uh, extremely high end gallery here in downtown Chicago. Um, this piece. Is just as highly detailed as the others. What's so wonderful about these pieces is that though they are highly detailed and sophisticated, they have a certain childishness about them and a certain playfulness, you know, that it's so youthful. But I know that they're sophisticated. I know that the level of workmanship, I can't imagine the level of workmanship they take. Let's say that I can't imagine it. But the, the childishness, where do you get that sense of youth and that sense of playfulness? You have just an internal youth going on, you know, in your work. I'm blessed to have that. This piece was done from 2000 in Chicago. In 2000, they had a ping pong 
was the exhibit. The first exhibit, you know, they had was the cows. Right. And right. this was the next it was the ping pong. And I did this as a homage to that. Of from the ping pong. Yeah. And it's called in Cobblestone Cobblestone Park. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the benches. Okay. And uh, tried to capture the action of the people to get a feeling of the motion and the action. Are you trying to be I'm sorry, you go on. Go ahead. What I love about it is that you do enter the world. You feel like you're there, like you could have been there. Well, that's you know? good. That's what I try for. Mm -hmm. I try. That's one reason <coughs> you don't find faces mm -hmm. hardly in my picture, so they can be anybody that you would want them to be. Maybe you my know kids. someone that plays ping pong or something like that, and you can think of it as these are my children or... Like that. That's right. I like to fantasize that I could play mm -hmm. ping pong, so I just superimpose myself on the face of that player because I like his sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you get the? Now this, how did you get this to be so miniature? Or maybe we shouldn't give away any of your secrets. But I can see this is a a shirt. How and it's done on the scale of every other uh, piece that you have here, which I see that you you were able to cut down. But this looks like it was actually something that. Was no, shrunk? it might have. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a shirt. It, okay. No. It, but you made it look like a tennis shirt. It's so it amazing. It has a little logo and everything. Something I can see a large piece mm -hmm. of a something and just the shadows in it. Where the shadows are in that large piece, I can see a cutting it piece. so I can get to the the shadow when you see under the arms and whatnot. Yes, that is amazing because it has action, it has life and movement. And that's something I picked on in that piece. You got, you have a live bird, you have live pictures of ducks here in a scale that, I mean, it's, it's These a things I see once in a while if I'm looking through something mm -hmm. and I may save it for just an occasion like this. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I might not know where it's going to be at the time. Okay, but you save it up and mm -hmm. when it comes time to use it. It's such a wonderful way to use it. Such a beautiful thing. Okay. Mr. Stringfellow, I think I know what this is. Baptism? Baptism. Okay. Could you elaborate? Where did you uh, see this beautiful thing? Oh, in my home in Champaign, we did this mm -hmm. maybe once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. Sometime all the churches would go together. We'd always have outdoor baptism in Crystal Lake. Okay. A lot of times it was usually we'd have a picnic to go along with it. But we baptized outside. This is one of my signature pieces. I. I have a baptism in every show. This is beautiful. The, was the lake so blue? Was the, <laughs> was well, the pool lake so was, blue? Crystal Lake was a nice, clean environment. It's gorgeous. I don't know if Crystal Lake was a man-made lake or not. Mm -hmm. But we used it for baptism. We used it for ice skating in the winter. Wow. Look at, look at that beautiful veils. Such a highly spiritual and such a a ritual among anyone who knows about baptism. And the red umbrella came because mm -hmm. they always held the red umbrella over the preacher, whether it was raining or, or, or I guess to keep the sun off. Mm -hmm. And it was always red. Yeah. Such a classic piece. Um, I don't know how many baptisms take, door out, take place outdoors anymore. So this is so classic. Mm -hmm. It's such a piece of history that we're seeing. You know, you've encapsulated, you've captured that point of history and uh, what period where did this, this, does this come from in your memory what period I guess this would have to be late 20s or early 30s mm -hmm. when I was still mm -hmm. living in Champaign beautiful beautiful another amazing piece of work again the spiritual thing it makes you want to praise them makes you think about God, and I'm so glad that that's your aim. 
It's a beautiful endeavor. To make people feel good, make people happy. It's a wonderful endeavor. And just looking at you, I'm happy because you got on that red. It just makes you want to jump out your skin <laughs> looking at that red. You know, for the last 10 years, I guess I wore, maybe 15 years, I've worn nothing but red. Why is that? What is it that you see in red? What is it about the red well, for you? Well, it attracts, just like you asked me that question, that's what I see. Mm -hmm. It attracts people's attention. You go right to it. If you, you don't to... remember Stringfellow, you remember the artist in red. Oh, yes. I love that. <laughs> okay, with that, we're going to go on. Mr. Stringfellow, this is Urban Life? Well, this is done, again, this was done for the cover, for the advertisement for the ping pong last year. Oh, okay. And this is one of the few pieces, once in a while, there will be real people mm -hmm. in there that I use. Okay. The figure on this side is the gallery owner. Okay. And then those people there, that's, uh, the mayor Dorothy and, and Dorothy Tillman. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, one of our luminaries of Chicago. Another piece of history you've so captured. Uh, this is an amazing piece. I see there looks like live buildings. There's some that are painted and constructed mm -hmm. um, strictly. And it's amazing you got the guy over there selling streetwise. Yeah. You just have, it's so detailed. <laughs> you know, it's, it's wonderful, comical work. Yeah, you know, and uh, highly detailed. What more can we say about this piece? I love the fact that that's a woman wearing leopard and you've got this one in African regalia. You know, I love the yeah, way you dress your people. Well, that's the fun of it. I like that. It's so much fun. If I had one of these in my living room, I know my children would just, oh, yes. they would stand in front of it for hours. the whole object is something that people enjoy looking at. Mm -hmm. and give them a happy feeling. It's wonderful. I want a happy feeling all the time. Well, I get a happy feeling <laughs> looking at your work. I get a happy feeling being around you. Such a warm spirit. Right, and a thank you person. very much. Okay. And well, this is just a small portion of the work from Stringfellow. Again, it's pre -re -pre previewing. <laughs> Okay. This is just a sample of the work by Alan Stringfellow. Again, he is a legend living amongst us in our time and someone that we need to know and be aware of. This is my first encounter with you. Uh, I am so impressed and in awe, so excuse me if I'm a little nervous. Uh, but your work is amazing and it's been collected by some of the heavy hitters. Who are the some of the collectors of your work that we might know? There's so many. There's a humongous list. There's so many. That's why I won't mention any because okay. I wouldn't want to miss anybody. Miss anyone. One special one that everyone knows is Oprah. Yes. So. There's a story that I read that she bought some of your work, if I'm correct, while you were living down in CHA. Oh, yes. And she brought something like 15 of your collages while they were showing. Yeah, I've uh, come a long way. You have come so far, and that's, such, that's the beauty mm -hmm. of it, that we can find a jewel in ourselves that God has planted in us and bring it to the forefront and lift ourselves up. And in lifting ourselves up, lift other people up. You bring happiness and joy to the community, and you brought this beauty. Thank God you found this gift, and thank God that he gave you the gift. You also have an, a gallery, or you also show at one other gallery yeah, in New York. Yeah, we're in New York, in Harlem. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the feel of New York and uh, how have they accepted string Oh, fine, work? fine. The Essie Green Gallery mm -hmm. really gave me the biggest push yes. from the start because I was with Essie's gallery before I was here yes. with the gallery in Chicago. Mm -hmm. how but, long? but I'm just with two galleries. I don't don't go too far and wide with know. it. Why is that? Is there a method to the way that you market yourself? Well, you have to respect your gallery owner. Okay. A gallery owner does a lot for you. They do a lot of work. 
and they should get a lot of credit and a lot of respect. Yes. And I respect my gallery owners, they respect me, and I expect them the same way. Yes. And that's one advice that I like to give to young artists. Mm -hmm. Be true, be faithful to your gallery. Okay, wonderful. wonderful. If a gallery decides to show you, don't uh, undersell them or okay. whatever. You have to be faithful. You have to be faithful, period. Yes, and everything that you do, mm -hmm. and honest in everything that you do. Mr. String Fellow, again, a legend, a world-renowned artist living amongst us. So glad to have had the opportunity to present him to you. Uh, and Carney, do you have any words to say to the young artist or anyone who wants to make their life shine like you've made your life, your light shine? Well, without God, your life can't shine. You have to have faith, and you have to believe in Him, because without Him, we could do nothing. Yes. We would do nothing. If yes. you love Him, He'll love you and guide you. Yes. And in this work, in everybody's work, I'm sure, but in my work especially, I need a lot of guidance mm. to... To be patient enough and to do to it. And to be completing all the small, all the things. How many keep works? Going. What would you say you've completed? I mean, because I can't imagine getting through one of these pieces with the detail, and I would just well, forget you go, about it. <laughs> you go in, when I go in my studio to work, I thank him first, uh -huh. ask for the guidance of what I'm going to do, yes. and he's there for me. And then I have faithful, beautiful, wonderful gallery owners. Mm -hmm. Supporting and backing you, yeah. pushing you. That's a beautiful thing. Well, Mr. Alan Stringfellow, it was a pleasure. And it was a pleasure? Absolute Me pleasure. Too. Thank you. I'm going to mention your age. My age? I'm 79. Because he has no problem with it. <laughs> and it is so beautiful. I'm 79 and blessed. I'm yes. blessed to be 79. And your success is climbing, you know, through his grace mm. and through his will. That your success is climbing at this age. And that should give hope and uh just a sense of wonder to all the older members of our community that you still have something to give. You have something to give. And you have such, you're giving so much. I wish I had your, your view, <laughs> your joie de vie. You know, you have given me something to think about. I want to take that with me. Okay, and thank you very much. Thank you so and much. I appreciate you again. <laughs> Two lavaliers. Two lavaliers. Oh yeah. Okay. I will get. We will get. You can. We're just happy. Handheld for the three of you. Handheld mic for the no, just that. Handheld mic. Handheld mic for the three of you or two lavaliers? Two lavaliers. Handheld mic. Okay, this moment we'll change. Because then we can talk to everybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah.
Three. I'm here at Nicole Gallery and I have Nicole who really doesn't want to work, but I'm going to make her work anyway <laughs> to tell us more about the opening of this particular exhibit and then we want to discuss Lauren who has this wonderful piece uh, that we are standing in front of and then Ayoka wants to get her two cents in. So this is sort of like a group effort beginning with Nicole. Tell us something about this young man who has this beautiful work behind us, Nicole. Oh, this is Laurent Dumba. Laurent is from, Camer from Cameroon. I met him in 1989, introduced to me by a mutual friend. And Laurent came with a few paintings and I said, okay, young man, I think you are very talented. If you will help, let me guide you. I think I can make of you a very good artist. He's very harmonious, a wonderful young man. So he said, okay, we, we began working, and that was from 89. And for the last past two years, we have had him in Black History Month, you know, for show for two artists or three artists. So he's been doing very, very well. And most of all, because he is so harmonious and he is so cooperative, cooperative, that makes things very easy for us to work together. And he is getting better and better. We have everything that Lawrence brings. I look forward to these days because he is doing such a great job. So this is Lawrence here. He can tell you more about his well, hi, I'm Laurent Dumba. I'm originally from Cameroon and I've been here for about 15 years. I met Nicole in 1989, like she said, and we've been good friends since then. And we worked, you know, together and I trust her fully with my art. And I think she helped me a lot in growing as an artist in Chicago. And I hope to grow even more since this is just the beginning of it. And behind me, I have a nice painting, one of my paintings. I love it too, but, you know, we'll talk about it a little later on. Why not talk about it now? Well, let's talk about it then. Um, right. <clears throat> this is a painting that represents something that I started about um, two, three, four years ago, which is called In Style Kalanja. Kalanja is just a name I made up. You know, it doesn't mean anything, but I just made it up, you know, just to reflect my own self. And Kalanja means definitely that it's a style of abstract and realism. Abstract because, you know, what you see is boxes. You see a few boxes there, and realism because you see faces. You know, realism for the things that we already know. And what I'm trying to do with this, um, this style that I just created and that I'm going to pursue, you know, is basically come, I mean, challenge myself to bring the clients something that they haven't seen before, and bring myself something that I haven't seen before because I'm beginning just to see it, and <clears throat> also to kind of like mix the digital art into the kind of fine art. It's, it's very difficult to explain because it's something that I feel and I, nev I didn't feel it just before doing this painting. I just started doing it and then it just started falling into place and it's still falling into place. Um, in this particular painting you can see that you know there's a lot of boxes and stuff. The colors are completely dislocated sometimes. You know, once in a while you see a color which is completely different from another, but globally what you get is an image that is projected in space with the lights where they're supposed to be and the darkness where they're supposed to be. And for that reason, this is a perfect example. You have all this white color here and you have this dark color there. When you look at them close up, you see two different colors. When you take a step back, you see a blend of colors. And that's the magic of it and that's what I love about it. Lauren, Lauren, you are killing me with this piece. Mm -hmm. You're killing me with it. Where did you find those faces? Well, it's like um, I'm, of, um, I'm originally from Cameroon and I've been living here for a while. So all the paintings that I do are related to my background. So what you see is basically the people I know, these are my mothers, these are my sisters, these are my daughters, whatever you want to call. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I, I pull from the background 
in projecting to where I live today. I think today I live in the United States of America and I can see some similarities and that's what I'm trying to put together. The African background with the African American in, in the, into the projection. Mm -hmm. This is so detailed. Just the varying shades that you've used and the cubism, the, the boxes, the digital effect that you've created. And you said that just started coming as you were painting. You didn't set out to do this? No, I didn't because I was actually confused when I started this one. I could already paint um, normal faces. I could already paint people. So I needed something a little more challenging. And believe me, I stayed about a week just thinking about it, like what am I going to do with this one? So I started like a few boxes and I remember I started in that corner over there. And then I said, maybe this is what I need to do. And I started doing it. At the beginning, I was completely wrong because the way I was masking the, can the canvas was completely off. So I had to redo it all over. Uh. And, and I slept with it in my room. Uh. So at night, sometimes I would wake, wake up and just look at it and say, oh, this portion here needs this and this portion is that. But at the end of it, I came up with the style. And I love it because you can blend each little section. So each little box has a life of its own. It's it not. Does. It contains all the shades of us. Exactly. All exactly. the shades and each face. Right. And I've seen these faces, you know, even though these faces, oh, yeah. I'm sure, are faces from your childhood. And fa exactly. I know these faces. These, this my picture. My mother, my grandmother, right here. Yes. You know, my cousin is right here. Well, you have a beautiful family. <laughs> uh, and that's the reason why, I mean, if you observe a lot of my paintings, you will see a lot of female. Mm -hmm. paintings because I believe in female beauty. You yeah. know, I don't paint too many men mm -hmm. because I think that when you know, painting ladies you can really express your sense of beauty mm -hmm. to the maximum and that's what I do and women I believe and in, when you go back to the continent of Africa women are the strongest people. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who really carry the continent and I want to celebrate them. Yes, yes, my husband says the same thing. He says you know, I, I mix my fufu on the stove, but if you saw those women pounding that yam, you would know what strength truly was. <laughs> this is amazing. This represents our beauty. I feel beautiful just looking at it. I'm so glad to be who I am just looking at this. Thank you for this vision. It is epic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.